Hey everyone, welcome back to Coded Row. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this chromatic aberration slash hallucination looking material. So this is the kind of material I would expect when you like get hit by a grenade or something. You'd probably have, have some, a little bit of flow, like camera lag or something. But yeah, you'll see these like dark rims around the edges of the screen. You'll also see um, a lot of like RGB kind of influx as if like your vision's a bit impaired and so on. Uh, your character would ideally have proper animation to move slower and also um, just be kind of like like woozy, like left, right, left, right. And yeah, so in this video, we're going to be creating this material. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is right click into my content browser, right and look for a material. And I'm going to call this something like M underscore hallucination. And I want to set this up as my material in my post process volume. So in my outliner, I'll go to my pros, my post process volume. If you don't have one, you can just click over here, type in post process volume and all these three things are the same. So you can just click one to add it and I'll just click on this. And what I'm going to do is in the details tab right here, I'm just going to type in material and under the array, I'll left click to add this asset reference. And I want to just drag this M underscore hallucination over here. And when you hit save, nothing will happen because we haven't edited the material yet, but I'm going to go ahead and double click to open this up to open the material blueprint editor. And now what we're going to do is, so the first thing I want to do is just create the black round edges. So what we need to do is for the material domain, I'm just going to change this to post process. And we're going to start with a screen position and I'm going to make this a very beginner friendly tutorial. So I'm going to be explaining things step by step. So we've added the screen position node because this is pretty, this is pretty much going to provide the screen coordinates for the current pixel that's being processed. And now what we want to do is just subtract this and we're going to subtract this with a constant two vector. So when I hold two on my keyboard and left click, you'll get a constant two, or you can right click and look for a constant two vector. And these are the coordinates that we're going to process on the screen. So in this case, I want to do something like 0.5 for the X and 0.5 for the Y, just to make sure it's 50% across the X axis of my screen and 50% across the X axis of the Y on my screen. So when I connect this, we're going to get the screen position of 0.5 and 0.5. And what we're subtracting, the 0 0.5, 0 0.5 from the screen coordinates, the origin is actually 0, 0. So, the 0 .5, so we're subtracting 0.5 of the X and Y just to get 0.5 for the X and Y as well. And this will help create an, a circular effect around the camera. And now when we attach the subtract node, we'll now attach to a length node. And the point of this length node is so that it calculates the distance from the center of the screen. And now we want to attach this to a clamp. And now we want to attach this to a clamp. And the point of the clamp node is to give us a minimum and a maximum value so that we can have a minimum of zero and a maximum of one. So this will ensure that the distance value between zero to one remain. So this will help normalize the distance for further processing. So we're going to connect this to a multiply node, and this will help scale the distance values. And multiplying by the clamp distance by two, for example, increases the range of the distance values. But in this case, I'm going to create a parameter by creating a constant one, right clicking, convert to parameter, and setting the value at 1.6 after trying it out on the keyboard to create a constant. And I'm just going to set the value as 1.6 and attach it to the multiply node instead of that too. But if you do want it to be a bit darker, you can just increase the value in order to make the outer rims and the overlay of your screen a bit darker. And now what we're going to do next is connect our multiply node to a one minus node. So you'll see that if I just connect the multiply node directly into the emissive color, that it's white all on the outside and black directly in the middle. When we're trying to achieve the opposite, which is to have the black on the outside and the white in the middle, and we're going to need to make that white part transparent. So the one minus node, and now when you see when I connect it, so before we saw white on the outside, now with the one minus node, you'll see the black rims on the outside and the whites in the middle. And if I were to click apply and then go over to my map, since we set it as our post process material, you won't be able to see anything because of all this uh, white in the way. But the black rim looks really good and that's exactly what we're looking for. So now what I'm going to do is actually connect this to a lerp interlope node and connect this to the alpha to make that white part hidden. And the purpose of this lerp interlerp node interpolates between two inputs, which is the A and B, based on the value of the alpha. And in this case, it's going to bend 
it's going to blend the black color and the scene texture. And now we're going to create a scene texture node. And when we click on this in the scene texture ID, we're just going to set it to post process input zero. And I want to connect the color to the B node and I'll leave a at zero for now. And what this does is this node fetches the color data of the current frame being rendered. So the setting post process input zero indicates that it's accessing the scene's color texture. And now I want to get some chromatic aberration shift going on. And again, you don't have to do all three of these because we're going to be going over the fish eye lens, chromatic aberration, and the black round part or the black outer area. So now if I scroll down into this empty area, I am going to create a couple parameters by holding one on my keyboard just two times and I'm going to right click both of them and I'm going to convert to parameter. So the second one, I'm going to call this green, green. I'll call this green layer. And the first one I'll call red layer. And these parameters are going to be a slight shift in those red and green away from our textures that we see, which will cause those like three line kind of, kind of like you go to a 3d movie theater. And now I'm going to connect both of these to their own add node. So I'm just going to add it to the a here. And then I'm going to duplicate this by holding control D or you can control C control V or right click and click add. And I will connect this to the a up here. And for the value for the red, I'm going to do point zero 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 four. And for the green, I'm going to do negative point zero 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 four. And this is so I want the red to be a bit higher than the objects and green to be a little lower. So it does look like, so you can still tell that the objects centered are in the middle. And now what I want to do is add a text coordinate, a text cord under both of these and connect it to the B. So I'll add one here and I'll add one here and I will add a third one. And now I'll just copy paste another text cord down here for the blue. So the point of this text cord is to provide the UV mapping coordinates for the texture mapping, which is going to give us that green shift and red, those green, those red and green layers around our objects. So now for all the text cords or for the bottom text cord, I want to just drag this out and look for a scene texture. And I'm just going to set this one to the post processing input zero as well. And then I'm going to duplicate this up here and up here and connect these add nodes to both of these. And now I want to grab a mask node. So I'm going to right click type in mask and get a component mask. And now what we want to do is connect our color to three of them. So this top one will be for red. This middle one will be for the green and the bottom one will be for blue. And you'll see that it says mask RG and we only want it to show one. So what we're going to do is highlight over this mask, go to the left panel here and uncheck the G. So it only says mask R. And then I'm just going to duplicate this, place it down here and uncheck the R and select the G for green. And then again for the blue by checking the B only. And I'll make sure these color nodes are connected. And now I want to make a float. And now I want to make a float. And in this case, ideally you would do three if you're only doing the chromatic aberration because there are only three values. But in this case, we're going to make a float four because we need a float four to combine it with our other components that we're going to be creating in our material. So now I'm going to connect the red to the X, the G to the Y and the mask B to the Z. And in order to combine these two, I'm just going to unpin this lerp node that's going to the emissive color, drag it out, look for a multiply node by holding shift and clicking eight for our multiply symbol. And then I'm going to connect the result of make float four into the B node. And then I'll connect this to the emissive color. And now you'll see. So now when we hit apply, you're not going to see any chromatic aberration. And that's because I did mess up. For the default value, it's not three zeros. It's actually going to be two zeros. So I'll do 0 0.004 and then over here, negative 0 0.004 and then I'll hit apply. And now you'll see a bit of an RGB effect around this border, just like that. And now when I test it in my map, you'll already see this kind of like phase buzzing looking hallucination type vision. And now I'm just going to highlight over all of this, hit C for comment and call this chromatic aberration. And now let's play around with one more thing, which is going to be a fisheye lens. And the one that I'm doing is actually not going to be so transparent and so obvious, but I do want it to have a somewhat of an effect on the outer rims around the border of the screen, just to make it a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to go down here add another screen position, as we talked about earlier, 
and I'm going to connect this to the mask. But in this case, we're actually going to mask both the red and green. And now I want to connect one of these to a radial gradient exponential. And the point of a radial gradient exponential is so this node helps get us a pattern that typically fades out exponentially from the center towards the edges. And it's commonly used to create effects such as soft circles, halos, or any other circle type gradient based effects. So you'll see a few nodes on the left and the radius controls the size of the gradient. A larger radius makes the gradient spread out more. The density controls the fall off of the gradient, which the higher density value makes the gradient fall off more quickly, creating sharper edges. So let's set up a few of the parameters. So for the center position, I don't really need to worry about this because it's already in the middle. I'm just going to hold a one and just set this value at zero and just connect it to the center position. And now I'm going to add two parameters, one for radius and one for fall off by clicking one, these constant values. And I'm just going to right click both of them and convert these to parameters. And the second one I'll call fall off. And the first one I will call radius. And now I'll just connect the radius to the radius and the fall off to the density. And we won't have to worry about invert density just yet. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect this radial gradient exponential output to a multiply node. And I'm actually gonna connect this to the B node just because it's closer. And I wanna connect this mask RG to an add node. And I want to add this by negative 0.5. So the mask RG node is used to isolate the red and green components of the vector and subtracting 0.5, we're actually adding 0.5 to the component since subtracting a negative is equivalent to adding. So the operation shifts the values of the R and G components each by 0.5. So basically the effect that this is going to have is going to have a shift of the mapping of the texture for texture coordinates. And this will efficiently move the texture sampling position by half the extent of the texture in both horizontal and vertical. It's a little confusing, but no worries. <laughs> and now we're just going to connect this to the other, to the A of the multiply node. And now I want to multiply this again by some sort of lens distortion intensity. So I'll add another multiply node and I want to gather a parameter. So hold one left click and right click this to convert to parameter. And I'm going to call this lens distortion intensity. And I'm just going to connect this to the B node. And for the purpose of the story, I do like to set it to something like negative 1.5. And I want to subtract all of this. So I'm just going to subtract this, this node. And I'll actually connect it to the B node. And I'll connect that mask RG that we created to the A node. And now I'm going to connect this to a scale UVs by center. In the texture scale V2, we're going to connect this to another parameter. So right click convert to parameter, and this is going to be called scale UV by center. And this will be, I'll just do 1.1. So I'll leave the default value as 1.1. And the point of the scale UVs by texture is just so that, so it allows you to scale the UV coordinates around the center of the texture. So it gives it kind of like a zoom in or zoom out feature while it's keep the scaling centered and the scaling will only affect the out, the outer part in this case. So now I'm just going to connect this to a scene texture and we're going to again make this scene texture ID post processing input zero. And this looks good to me. So I'll hit Q to merge it all. I'm just going to, or sorry, I'm going to click Q to line it all up. And now I'll hover over all of this, click C to comment and call this fish eye lens. And now I'm just going to connect this to another multiply in order to combine it. And now we need to connect these two together. So I'm just going to leave this multiply. Actually, I want to connect it to the B node just because it's closer to where it is. So I'll pin this to the B. This multiply will go to the A that's combining these two. And now I will connect this to the emissive color, hit apply. And now you'll see that I get this very odd looking hallucination effect. And you'll see that the outer rims kind of have this distortion scaling. So for example, when I look directly at the tree, you're going to see that it is completely centered. Whereas this one that's closer to the outer part of my rim is having this hallucination or this outer glow effect. 
as if it's like it has a secondary hologram behind it. So when I look directly at it, that outer rim is gone. And when I look, have it towards the corner, you're going to see that it gets more zoomed out and has this weird zoom effect. And yeah, this is exactly how you create the uh, this hallucination slash not so much of a body cam type of type effect, but it is um, a really cool to effect to have. Blah. It is a really cool effect to have in your game. And yeah, this is the effect that it gives, and I think it's super cool. Uh, definitely not like something you want to leave on as default. This could be something like um, in a horror game, like for example, not just for shooter games, but it could work for a horror game when a ghost is near you, and or if your character is just getting a bit more psych psychologically tormented or going crazy and so on. Kind of like in Amnesia, where you can see your sanity. And yeah, thanks for watching. Code of the Road. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.